grab some hair of the dog. It's a new week of breaking down security, and I know you're all hungover. I'm Brian Brake. Ms. Berlin, Mr. Betcher joined me this week. Hello. Yo. Well, you guys sound awfully chipper for people that have been sitting in, you know, several smoky hotels and, you know, blasting <sighs> your eardrums. Yeah. Well, we didn't get the con flu, I think. I, yeah, I'm, I'm con flu free, so. Yeah. Well, then you didn't try hard enough. I licked all the elevator buttons. Oh, oh I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that DEF CON video that they had of the guy who was in the elevator, you know, dousing the elevator, you know, with his... No, it wasn't from DEF CON. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. No. no. But I tweeted... So I tweeted that... I found that online. That's filthy, I, by the way. And I tweeted it out saying it was DEF CON attendees. Oh. And, like, it has, like, Chinese characters and everything at the bottom. Right. Uh, it's definitely not from DEF CON, but it was hilarious to... <laughs> to think it was and he got know. stuck in the elevator after that it was awesome yeah yeah <clears throat> so um how did everything go i'm gonna start with mr betcher because i know miss berlin was just busy 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 well i took my two teenage boys to um infosex summer camp so we started with b-sides oh not bunny ranch tried then. to get one of them uh volunteering at b-sides because he has a requirement next year to do uh, some volunteer work and do a presentation on it that didn't work out how come yeah well he never got a return email so he signed up and everything filled out all the forms never got a return email so he didn't know exactly what to do after mm-hmm. that, turns up you have to sign up for hours, right? You have to figure out what you want to do, sign up to be on staff for a particular hour of the day. And when we got in there, it was all full. Right. So we made some contacts, and he was able to volunteer at DEF CON. Oh, good. So some guys at uh, the uh, Packet Capture Village were gracious enough to give him a slot and then sign all his forms and stuff. So we got 15 hours in at DEF CON, wow. which is great. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, volunteer work, and he'll he'll do a presentation uh, on DEF CON, which I think will be really good as far as a cool organization to have volunteered for. Yeah, you know, it's kind of better than, I guess, picking up, not that picking up trash around the neighborhood is, is not as cool, but, you know, it, it's more interesting, I, I think, to... It's definitely not the norm. Hacker convention instead of, yep. Uh, I mean, there are probably not not as many people that could do well at volunteering at a hacker convention. So, yep. yeah. So, um, and uh, we stayed at the Tuscany, which is where B sides is held. We stayed for the week. We were able to utilize the B sides bus. I think there's some improvement that can be made there, like if they put a GPS on the bus that way everyone knows where the bus is. So they don't have to potentially waste an hour waiting for the bus mm. to come <clears throat> oh, know okay. exactly where it is. And they can choose whether to walk, take a taxi or wait a couple minutes for the bus. Right. Uh, I think the bus is a great idea. Um, that, that gets you from B sides to black hat to DEF CON and back and to the airport. And not in 145 degree weather. There's a little oh, warm yeah. there. And they have a nice little uh, ice chest in there, so you can go in, get a drink, sit down, uh, go to the next con, and and all that. <clears throat> so you did bus con, Ms. Berlin. You were running around in your little rascal scooter. I apologize for those of you. I'm trying not to laugh every time Miss Berlin gets you know caught by one of you know S- Satan's uh, vampires there in the, in her office. <laughs> I I seriously went to just smash a mosquito, and I and I. And I pinched myself with my palms. Oh, ooh. <laughs> it hurt really bad. Uh. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't like scream out loud. So uh, I didn't do the bus thing, but I did at one point drive my scooter from Caesars to Tuscany uh, with a person on the back. <laughs> so, wow. <clears throat> it was. It was pretty fantastic. Doing the blue-haired lady thing already at this time. So it, yeah, it that thing books too really like i tried i got the the nicest and the fastest scooter i could get so you got the ferrari of of oh yeah rascal scooters okay oh yeah okay it was it was pretty great and then that thing that thing moved quick yeah so how did your talks go you gave a talk yes or two yeah i did the mental health talk at diane initiative right 
Um, that was the only talk I gave. Oh, but okay. then I, um, uh, I was a f- uh, photo goon for oh, all of Death Run. Right. Well, you were doing Whose Slide Is It? Yeah, I was a judge for Whose Slide Is It anyway. Right. How was that? Was that fun? That was hilarious. It was Man. super fun. I did yeah, that. they'll be doing it at Derby, too. Yeah, so. I did that at Derby last year. It was a lot of fun. I don't know how well I did as a judge, but, you know, Rando thought I was okay, I guess. Yeah, it was so, super fun. Yeah. Cool. And the best thing about Twitter is I I tweeted out that, like, I wanted one of those alcoholic slushies. And, like, when I was on stage, like, five minutes later, it showed up. Nice. So, thank you for uh, for that. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> so. Yeah, uh, you know, DEF CON, Black Hat, B-Sides, there's always some kind of drama there. Last year was uh, Malware Tech. This year, uh, because of the, the shooting that happened there, and the hotels, from what I understood, were quick to not exactly mention the event. They just called it the event. There was an event that happened in in Vegas a, a couple years ago, or a year ago, and uh, just after, I guess, hacker summer camp but there were some issues with uh you know hotel security coming in and looking in rooms if you had the do not disturb sign up um i was just wondering uh did you guys have any of that where you were staying at your relative well you were in the caesars Ms. berlin so i'm assuming you either got a uh, maid check or you got a security check right uh yeah i we never put up the um the uh do not disturb sign okay so we just had maids yeah maids came in yeah maids were the auxiliary security force in this case yeah we didn't really have anything disturbed or anything but i i talked to a couple really close friends that dealt with some crazy shit yeah um that definitely like so like the after the shooting and everything in vegas like they made pretty pretty public what their change in policy was right which so I didn't really understand everybody balking about. Oh my gosh, we didn't know their policy. Well, you can't really use that as an excuse, I don't think. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, the way they handled it, I think, was horrible. Yeah. Like I, I know people that were walked in on and very compromising positions when they shouldn't have been. Right. Um, and you know, a, a whole bunch of other stuff happened that. Uh, they probably should have uh, thought about beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Betcher, did you have any issues at the Tuscany at all? None. Yeah. I'd heard that it was on and off. It, it depended on the air, the, the hotel. And then I heard that every hotel was pretty much doing it. You just weren't around to see it happen. Right. So some people were, you know, saying, you know, basically, I let these people in on the idea that they were security. They wouldn't show me ID or they pointed at a patch on their, on their jacket, which, you know, for us folk who are paranoid or, you know, do physical assessments, you know, you have a Brown UPS uniform. Yeah. I'm the UPS guy. I don't have to show you my ID. See, I'm the UPS guy. I have a UPS uniform. I'm a UPS guy. You can let me in. Um, some of the folks ended up, you know, letting, you know, having you know the doors not you know knocked on very loudly and they were a little unhappy and they didn't feel safe and you know um yeah i i can completely understand where some of these people and some of them were you know ladies who were single who were you know looking out the peephole and they see two dudes coming in hey let us in we're security and that would definitely set me on edge if i was single lady in vegas by myself with two big strapping dudes outside wanting to come in and look at my stuff so um, especially if they weren't giving ID or the ID was, you know, in insufficient for what they were doing. So, um, you know, they're definitely, if you're ever in that kind of thing again, and you know, that's social engineering of, of the heinous type. I mean, I've been so, I've been hit here at home. Somebody knocks on my door and it's like, is this you? And they point to me on a, they point to my name on a Facebook site that looked like it was for like the local DNC group or something in the area. And they were trying to find out questions about local candidates. And I said, Oh yeah, that's me. And they're like, Oh great. And I I go, I am such an idiot. <laughs> and at that point I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm done here. Thanks. And I shut the door. And then at that, you know, it, it, I was, and then Mr. Thank you can thank Mr. Betcher for this example, but I was re I was listening to the audiobook uh, thinking fast and slow, where it talked about system one and system two thinking. And, uh, you know, the system one, is is very impulsive and will just you know do things based on the information that is available what you see is all there is and uh the system two is the one that you know 
doesn't want to do anything, but in the absence of like any real data, we'll have to then, you know, engage. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know, that's the thinking part where you're like, oh, I'm such an idiot. And then that's where you realize, oh, I screwed up. And then, you know, you, you shut the door. A lot of these people got hit with the system one thinking where it was like, oh, they must be security because they say they're security. I should let them in. And it's like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that. You know, so, that, you know, that's uh, that's some of the, the social engineering aspects that I'd love to get. And I hope that we get this person on in the next few weeks because uh, his PR company keeps jacking us around on times. But um yeah, it's um, very interesting, uh, very interesting how a lot of this stuff worked. And, you know, um, you know, if you're in a hotel room, it's a very hostile environment. It's probably one of the most hostile environments we go into and we expect security and privacy, which you're not going to get either in a hotel room. You know, the the safe can be unlocked with a key, you know, no matter if you have a key card, you know, key card swipe or not. Uh, there's no really safe place to put any valuables in there because, it, you know, the maids are going to come in or, you know obviously any hotel security can come in. Um, you know, some of the stuff that I was hearing people saying they had in the rooms, I was like, why did you bring that? You know, there's some things that was like, I, did you necessarily need to bring that? Now I understand for some folks it was necessary, but there's just some things, maybe you should leave it at home. I overpack all the time and I hate when I do that. And, um, maybe sometimes you just need to leave your four computers at home. If you only need one, you know, uh, especially, you know, or if it's a work box, you may have to carry that shit around. Just make sure you have a really nice backpack or, you know, willing to carry around a five pound backpack. So, um, I'd also heard that there were tweets where the, the, pl- uh, the, the peephole was, uh, the, they had a flap over the peephole as a security measure, I guess, after when Aaron Andrews had been, they used one of them <laughs> peephole cameras to look through her peephole in reverse mode. So they, yeah. as a security you can measure, buy those things super cheap. Yeah, as a security measure, they had the little little metal thing over the over the peephole inside the room, and those had been removed, I guess, um, in in recent months or whatever. I just stick my peephole with toilet paper, and it seems to work out fairly well. So sticky note, whatever. Yeah, yeah, anything works. So, um, but yeah, yeah, but again, like uh, I, I know um, in a couple cases, like the uh, the deadbolts had been locked, right, and. People were in the room and they still use the tool to get the deadbolts open to get in. No shit. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, and, and like the deadbolt is uh, totally bypassable by the staff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, and, and if you look at it from their point of view, like, what if somebody's dead in there? Right. Right. Yep. You, you have to get in there somehow. Right. You know, um, and, and a whole bunch of other situations could arise that they really need to get in there for something. Yeah, I'm an um, idiot. I mentioned the deadbolt thing online, so I didn't I didn't realize that. That does make sense. I mean, yeah. if you think the safe in your hotel room is safe, it's not. They they have a little metal spot that you can slide across and the key will override anything you've got in there. So I I'm not I can't imagine why the deadbolt would work. So yeah, that makes they, sense. They can get into if if they come into hotel rooms while you're in there. Um and demand to come in, you know, the castle doctrine that we have in Texas, if you don't know what the castle doctrine is, Google it. Uh, it extends to hotel and motel rooms. I don't know what they have oh. in Nevada as far as an equivalence, but you can get into a situation where someone was trying to defend themselves from intruders, right? Coming into their room and somebody ends up getting killed. Right. Right. So uh, in Nevada, they do have a castle doctrine. People in Nevada have the right to use deadly force to protect their occupied home or occupied vehicle from assault. They have no duty to retreat. Uh, This note only applies to homes and vehicles that have at least one person inside. So I don't know if it extends to hotels and stuff on the Strip in Vegas, but uh, they do have a castle doctrine in, in Vegas. So, um, but you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you want to be, you know, packing inside of a, you know, a hotel. I think even, you know, if they found you were packing, they, I don't know if they'd ask you to leave or not, but, um, you know. I mean, you're supposed to be allowed. Like I, I know, um, Ohio concealed carry, I think carries over to Vegas. Right. Yeah. I know that some States have CCH that works and then some that don't. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's definitely not illegal to have a weapon there. Right. 
So apparently, uh, according to this site, Southern Universe, South University at EDU, uh, Nevada has a very strong castle doctrine and stand your ground law. So I guess it could be argued that if they were trying to force their way in and you were innocent and you felt your life was threatened, even though they were like, hey, look, I'm security. I have a bad I have a you know patch on my jacket that shows I'm security. If you're not feeling safe, you could technically, you know, shoot first and ask questions later. So. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, my fur, <laughs> my furry children do that too. So, um, anyway, well, so yeah, you know, what, hacker you summer camps first and ask questions later. What's that? <laughs> Your furry children shoot. <laughs> yeah, actually, first. they they jump up on the the desk here and they impede my work. So, yeah, so um, you know, there's uh, there's no um, you know there's no lack of uh, uh, you know drama at these things as a matter of fact i saw also that uh if you have your do not disturb sign up some people tweeted out like how to bypass the 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 room check code which right you know i did retweet that but in hindsight i probably shouldn't have done that it's not a very good thing to do i mean because if i was a bad guy like the shooter in vegas and i knew that code you know, that circumvents a lot of the security stuff that was put into place to make sure that those kinds of things wouldn't happen again. And, right. um, you know, ultimately, I don't think I think hotel security is, um, you know, going to going to have to I would hope they're looking at their policies and procedures, uh, you know, especially when it comes to like two men and, you know, walking into an occupied ladies room. Um, you know, so, yeah. Well, OK. So let's ch- let's shift gears a little bit. Yes, please. Man, you're you're a photographer at DEF CON. Um, and I noticed that you asked a lot of people, can I take your picture? Can I take a picture? Yeah. I had yeah. no idea that was such a big deal about taking pictures. Did you get yeah. hit? Because I'm kind of like, I, I'm not going to post crap on social media, but but I'm kind of thinking it's interesting. I might show my kids or, or my wife, the picture just as, Oh, here's, here's some of the things that I experienced. Right. Right. I would never post someone on social media without asking them. However, um, I, I didn't know that, um, it was a huge deal that if anyone is spotted taking anyone's picture without permission, uh, there could be, um, uh, an incident. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, goon will stop you if you if they see you taking pictures of people without their uh, approval. Did you take right. pictures, Mister Betcher? I did take pictures, but <laughs> if if question, I was like, well, it, so I took some pictures of my son when he was uh, volunteering. Right. Right. So those were of him, and then. I started to take a picture of someone getting a haircut, but it was, it did not show their face. Um, their yep. head was down and no one else was in the picture. It was just their hair. Right. right? Uh, a mohawk. Right. So right. they had a mohawk con. Oh, right. And somebody was like, Hey, you didn't get permission. And, and the, the person getting the mohawk gave a thumbs up. So, oh. so then I snapped the picture. There you go. But yep. man, I mean, um, it, it happens all the time. I mean, people are constantly taking pictures without asking and it's just, you're not supposed to. Um, and, and especially, so um, I go to the DEF CON shoot every year and they, what I, I really like what they do. There's about, I don't know, I want to say a hundred, 150 people that show up maybe around there. Um, and every time uh, they start it, they say, well, if you don't want your face in pictures, you take red tape and you put it on your back and your arms. And that way everybody else is fair game. Like you can take pictures, you can do whatever and just don't get the people that have the red X's on, on their clothing in the pictures. Right. Um, and even then sometimes they're, they're okay with it. Like right. I've, I've had friends with X's or whatever. I'm like, Hey, I got like, the side of your face in this picture of the whole shoot. Is that okay? And they're usually fine with that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do my best to ask, uh, especially if I'm taking groups of group pictures of tables or, um, or stuff like that. Or, you know, if I'm taking a picture of a crowd, I make sure it's focused differently or that the majority of the people are walking away from me. Um, that kind of stuff, just because, you know, 
there's a lot of people that try and value their privacy as far as social media and stuff goes. Right. Right. And, and I will say that DEF CON 26, I liked it a lot better than DEF CON 24. So that was the second one I've been to. Uh, it seemed like a better venue and, and it was easier to get around. Yeah. And there were, there were a lot more things to do. There was more room right. everywhere. Um, I, I'm not sure how they're going to handle next year because they did announce next year it'll be at the same venues as it was two years ago, plus Planet Hollywood, so three right. hotels. Wow. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to work that out. Maybe it'll Planet still Hollywood. be congested as hell, I bet you. <laughs> yeah. This this time around, I, I didn't have a problem getting around. Uh, there may have been some cases where Track 1, which is the biggest, I believe, um, let out and, and there were a lot of people there trying to go to lunch, but that was a, a limited time frame. It seemed like Paris and Bally's was just a constant um, inside the casino between the two hotels, just yes. a major traffic jam all the time with people yelling, everybody needs to move, stop standing around. Yeah, it, it took five minutes literally to get from one side of the casino to the other. Yep. And, yeah, it was just um, not a good experience. Right. <clears throat> so, um, what? So, I, I understand that um, the the walk up badges. There were very few of those this year for B sides Las Vegas, and there may be even less walk up badges next year. Uh, they have released the room block, so if you are interested or maybe even thinking about wanting to go to B sides Las Vegas next year, um, you. Go and uh, find them on Twitter, and uh, you know, get on, get on at the Tuscany. I guess the the rooms are super cheap there, and uh, they're fairly nice. And if you're interested in doing B sides Las Vegas, you know, plan now because there may not be any in a you know in a couple of months. So, or they may have to reopen additional room blocks. So. All right. Well, you know, um, I'm sorry I didn't get to go and I'm going to definitely make it a point to go next year if I can, because uh, uh, there should be no reason why I shouldn't be able to. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> well, I would have gone this year. My company went. Leviathan did go. We did have a, a party there. We did have badges. Uh, one of a couple of our guys created some badges with the idea that if you could solve it, you get invited to the party and we'd like to talk to you. There's some hardware hardware hacking on that. So there were this was definitely the year of the badges. Like really? badge life was just like super took off this year. Right. I I probably saw at least um Sorry, I keep on. That's like the sixth mosquito now. Uh, I saw probably three or four dozen unique badges. Goodness, this year is ridiculous. Now, now, now. Other than the the DefCon and the the Con badges, what, what I mean, what were they about? Was it like, oh, we've got challenges on this? Was it a, hey, if you can oh, yeah. solve this badge, we want to talk to you and hire you for a job? Is it? you get into these secret parties. Well, I mean, what, what kind of badges are we talking? Is it all kinds? Yeah. A lot of them were like party and, and uh, village related, like um, queer Con had their own badge. Uh, Car hacking village had their own badge. There's like the crypto village. There's just like, <laughs> I, I saw probably oh. five or six people with at least a dozen badges on around their necks. Mm -hmm. So, wow. and, and I mean, I don't even, I don't even collect badges and ended up with seven of them on, uh, that I brought home. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So they all have challenges on them and you're going to attempt to ch you know bang on them later on. Um, one of them I have to put together and oh. um, I'm teaching my youngest kid how to solder. So we're going to work on that one together. Do that outside. I went to um, the hardware hacking village and there were every, most of the room, which is a, a fairly large room, people were soldering badges together that they had um, that they had either either purchased or been given at oh, the con. Wow. Yep, very cool. So yeah, and and they had um, someone there who would help fix a badge if you screwed it up or if you needed help with it to troubleshoot it. Had a huge contraption there ready to go with all kinds of equipment. Nice. And there was a line of about five or six people, maybe 10 waiting for their turn to have them take a look at it. Goodness. So, yeah. Wow. So they have 
professionals on staff ready to help. They have tables, they have soldering irons, everything ready to go. So if you're interested in that, but you don't want to to buy a lot of equipment just to get started, you can try it out there. Right. My my thing was I was wondering about because they 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 were sold out. I think it was B size Las Vegas. And at this point, I was like, well, what do you do if you can't get a badge? You know, a ticket to B sides. Uh, what 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 was there left to do? But I I guess like you guys said, there was a ton of various villages that you could go to. Um, B sides was what smack in the middle between DefCon and Black Hat. It kind of straddled both days on those. How Black Hat straddles. Black Hat straddles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it was um, it, it's definitely uh, definitely a lot to do, and you don't necessarily have to have a ticket to to do any of those things. I would imagine you could just get in and visit the villages you can go and do obviously lobby con is uh, is is stellar and phenomenal so you know you have to have a ticket for any of the cons yeah you do Even but the villages. really okay mm-hmm. okay so if you didn't get into b-size las vegas you're pretty much screwed well you can get into defcon right oh okay and yeah, Defcon never runs out of badges. Oh, I that's mean, good. Okay, they run out of badges sometimes. They never stop taking your money to let you in. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> They're capitalists. They want your money. So yeah. Right. Even if they run out of badges, you will end up with a paper badge. Right. Um. Or if there's one from last year or whatever. Um. But this year, I don't. They either didn't run out of badges or did they didn't. They didn't have many that they had to give out that weren't. Um, uh, they didn't run out. They were selling them the last day. Okay. Wow. Eight dollars right. or something like that. They were yeah. selling badges because because the badges are um, a puzzle themselves, and they mm-hmm. you know you put batteries in them, they do stuff, right? right. So uh, yeah, they were selling them for forty dollars on the last day. I, All right. Yeah, yeah I heard something about somebody putting the batteries in backwards and they were causing some of the badges to explode or leak or something. Um, I don't know if that was true or not, but I saw that on Twitter. Yeah. They were putting in the batteries backwards. There was, there's supposed to be like a diode that'll like prevent that from happening. That wasn't on the badge. I see. Okay. One of them, uh, one of them explode. It, it didn't explode. Apparently some component of it exploded. Ew. Uh, or me. Uh, it made a loud noise. Really? And the guy looked at it and said it was his badge. His batteries were in correctly. It oh. just, the whole badge stopped working and, and right. made a component on the badge that, that exploded. Maybe but was... he said it was his badge. Right. Um, and I, di- I didn't see that his batteries were in backwards because it seemed to be working before it exploded. Right. Okay. But it didn't hurt anybody or whatnot. Yeah. All right, so good time to be had by all. Mostly, um, if uh, you know, with every 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 time we you go, you're going to hit some little bumps, but you got to kind of be adaptable, I guess. Um, and it's it's definitely a good time if you can get there. So, uh, you know, the whole of B side a uh, break sec will be there next year, come hell or high water. So, yes, we can um, do a podcast there next year. Damn right, damn right. Yeah, I would do that, but I would have gone this year. But like I said, my company went. A lot of people went. Um, I have three weeks of vacation coming up going to Europe and it was contingent upon my hiring at the new place. And I told them I won't take any other time off except for that. And then I was like, oh yeah, and Derby and oh yeah, and B-Side Springfield where I, you know, I'm working. But other than those, I'm good. So yeah, I, I'm burning up all of my, my vacation time until like next February. So I wanted to, yeah, definitely going to do that and uh, Derby again next year if possible. So all right, so let's do a quick news because I know some of you are, you know, um, you know, we're just going to fill up a little time here. So it says, tw- uh, I got this, I, I was reading this the last couple of days, and it said that uh, according to 24-7 Wall Street, there's news article says 25% of known security vulnerabilities have no fix. And they're trying to say that the, the security firm called Risk-Based Security, which sounds... Um, you know, I've never heard of them. I'm sure they're very good, but fake. they're what? <laughs> they're fake. Yeah. I'm joking. Yeah. I mean, it was the company I used to work for. They had a next door neighbor called Wealth Management Service. And I was like, well, OK, I guess it exactly explains mob. what you are. But yeah. 
So they said uh, analysts at this computer security firm published uh, 10,000, probably 10,700 flaws in computer systems known as vulnerabilities that can be exploited by a hacker to take unauthorized access actions within a system. So that was just in the first half of 2018. And they said that the total number of vulnerabilities only, uh, there were no known solutions for 25.6% of them. So, you know, I'm looking at this, and if I wasn't necessarily thinking with my system too, I'd be like, oh my God, we're so screwed as, a, as an organization. 25% of our vulnerabilities are not patched or are patchable or, or whatever. And, you know, what, what kills me is that it seems like uh, there's a lot of vulnerabilities that you probably don't need to patch because they don't affect you. Am I wrong yeah. in this thinking? Um. No, it it says, and I'm quoting from the article that the article is quoting, uh, of the large number of vulnerabilities reported in 2018, 25.6 currently have no known solution. Solution. Because of this, patching, while very important, is only a part of modern vulnerability management in today's environment. Effective vulnerability management must include blah, 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 other things. Right. right? And that's a good point. You have to include other types of mitigations um, yep. In, in your security program. Right. Not just patching. Right. right. And, you know, um, so when you guys were having fun at Hacker Summer Camp, I was actually reading books because that's what I do to get smart. Oh. Ah, I know. Oh, I, had, I, uh-huh. I picked Look up the audio you. book, uh, How to Measure Anything in Cybersecurity. I was listening to that one. Uh, audio books. Um, I'm also on doing the Phoenix project. Thank you, Mr. Betcher for that one. I'm, I'm listening to that one now. Uh, so I'm listening to like how to measure anything in cybersecurity and they were talking about, and they were very critical of the CVSS scoring system because it's very specious with regard to how it decides what, you know, what is what and, and the numbers and stuff. And, um, you know, they're, the CVSS doesn't take into account things like chaining of vulnerabilities or uh, the, the, they, they have a relative skill level of the person involved, but they don't talk about like, you know, what is low difficulty for some person could be very high difficulty for another. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, my whole thing is of the 10,000, they say tw- there's no solution for a roughly a quarter of them. If you know what you have in your environment, that may not be 25.6. You may have less than 5% of the, tw- of the you know, instead of 10,600 flaws or vulnerabilities in software, there may only be 2,000 CVEs that, that affect you. And of those, you may have less than 1%. And that's why, we, you know, like Mr. Betcher said, we have mitigations, you know, firewalls and properly, you know, netted you know, firewalls and land segmentation and additional, you know, operating system controls. So that's why we have our layers of defense to, to help protect against that. Right. And if a lot of these are IOT, you may have your IOT devices in a segmented VLAN, which would mitigate these vulnerabilities. Right. So yeah. it says they, they have no known solution. Right. But they ha- may have well-known mitigations. Right. Right. So, uh, Ms. Berlin, I know you've been out this week, but uh, what if somebody came, what if one of your clients came to you and said, hey, you know, I saw this article, 25.6% of our stuff isn't patched. What do, what do we do? What are we paying you for? Yeah, not even unpatchable. But, I mean, that's exactly why they pay us, right? Right. That doesn't have to be patchable. We just have to be able to alert on it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, but what happens if you don't have any detection I mean, mechanisms? You have then to find those on the fly, wrong. right? <laughs> well, well, there's a there's a lot of unpatched things, right? Default right. passwords, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but that has a med- that has a mitigation. This was talking about twenty five percent doesn't have mitigation, right? Well, it says uh, there's no known solution. So, um, right. I mean, so I like, ideally, I'm thinking fix it, patching, device, whatever, right? Well, my thing is, I, I assume that they mean there's no patch. Um, there, there could be mitigations. Uh, there obviously is mitigations for a lot of vulnerabilities. My thing was, it's like, um, like I had a boss one time, uh, you know, a vulnerability came out like that day and he's like, 
what does our vulnerability manage? What does our vulnerability scanner tell us about this vulnerability? And I'm like, it's not going to tell us anything until Nessus or uh, well, I'll fix that in post until Tenable comes back. Oh, wait, I'll fix that again. Uh, until they, <laughs> <laughs> until they come back and they issue a patch, you know, or until they, until they know how to detect for it, we won't be able to detecting for it, you know? So yeah. uh, it, it's interesting how some people in the enterprises will assume that you've got a vulnerability scanner and you're going to find everything. It doesn't find O days. It doesn't find stuff that's just dropped. Uh, it takes days for those companies, much like antivirus, to catch up with the detection mechanisms to be able to search for those things or to at least push out if you're doing credentialed scans that you're running, you know, libpng1057 instead of 1058, you're screwed, you know, that kind of thing. And it, and it makes me think of, so I've been going through like the whole attack matrix, right? Trying to come up with recommendations and detections and all that kind of like specific stuff for the sim we're writing. Right. Uh, where I'm working. And like, I don't know, I've gotten... Huh, there's so many of them I've, I've, I've gotten through maybe 40 at this point and there's a good handful that don't have defensive or alerting capabilities really for really? the most part like do um, you have an example i was trying to find it right now oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to put you on while, the spot. while you're trying to find it uh there's another interesting uh piece of the article where this came from it says an important and compelling statistic is that of the 3,000 vulnerabilities not reported by CVE, 44.2% have CVSS scores between 9 and 10, which is high to critical. And that goes back to your uh, your um, how to measure anything. Is, is high really high and critical? Right. Really critical. And plus, if they don't have CVSS scores and uh, if they're not, reported by CBE, how do they have CVSS scores? Right. I don't really understand that. Maybe they're just applying that criteria to these based on what they know about the um, vulnerability. Yeah. But uh, 44% having high or more uh, severity. Mm. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So to add one more thing, it says about two thirds of the vulnerabilities exposed in the first half of the year were due to insufficient or improper input validation, including among the other things, cross site scripting and command injection. So there's still a lot of web application vulnerabilities out there. Uh, you know, we've done numerous shows about supply chain security. I actually had another article that I wanted to put on today, uh, but I decided to not to, uh, about Android applications that have been or not android but um, google applications or plugins in marketplaces that um, it was called web security plugin or something for a browser and it was sending information you know outside of the organization or to to other other places and we've talked about supply chain security and you know can you really trust the plugins that are you're running in your browser because as we know that a lot of these vulnerabilities or a lot of a lot of these plugins can get sold off to other people, you know, and and um, you know you don't know who's running or who's managing that that you know that application. So, you know, introducing new software can cause these vulnerabilities. New plugins in your WordPress, you know, CMS can cause and introduce vulnerabilities. Um, you know, they definitely have controls and mitigations in place for things like cross-site scripting or command injection, you can protect against those things. You can use uh, prepared statements or you can use, uh, you know, in, in, you know, for against SQL injection, uh, you know, make sure your PHP is sanitized and your Java is sanitized to not use exec functions, uh, you know, cross-site scripting, you know, validating all your input, and that was one thing I was thinking about the other day when I was driving into work, when we talk about the OWASP top 10 and we file bugs as, you know, pen testers or whatever. And we, you know, put out a report and we're like, oh, you know, we found cross-site scripting on this. That's, how do I, how did I, how did I say this? That's the effect, which is not what the developers understand or care about it's the cause so when we file a bug or we talk about what we found in the reports we didn't find cross-site scripting we there was input validation issues and we that caused the cross-site scripting so if we can format our reports to 
say it in that manner that it was, you know, improper in, uh, validation or, you know, input validation or, or something like that that is more programmer friendly. Yeah, you tailor it to your audience. Right, right. I mean, an uh, 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 InfoSec person is going to understand cross-site scripting. But if you're giving this to uh, an AppSec team or, you know, people who are application developers and they're like, well, okay, great, cross-site scripting, but what does that mean? And then you have to go, well, input validation issues. You're not validating your single quotes or your double quotes or your ampersands or your, your dashes or what have you. And there's some special characters you're allowing, but you're not escaping them properly or, you know, you're not, uh, you know, encoding them so that uh, they aren't, uh, they're, they're inert in in many respects so you have to yeah. you have to give them the cause versus the effect the cause is uh you know input validation causes cross-site scripting it's not cross-site scripting is caused or caused causes you know input validation it's it's the other way around right yeah uh sorry i went off at a tangent there miss berlin <laughs> so i found i found one of the ones i was talking about um okay so uh, either execution through API or execution through module load. Oh, yeah. Like it gives an example, like, uh, so in the attack matrix, like a wiki, right? It, right. It gives some examples, mitigation detection, references, all that kind of stuff, how it mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. uh, so for mitigation for these, it says uh, directly mitigating module loads and API calls related, related to module loads, loads will likely have unintended side effects, such as preventing legitimate software from operating properly. Efforts should be focused on preventing adversary tools from running earlier in the chain of activity and on identifying and correlating subsequent behavior to determine if the result is uh, malicious. So, so wait, that sounds like, sounds like something similar I've had in other environments where it was like, oh yeah, your Nessus scanner caused my application to break. Why don't you disable the vulnerability scanner? Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> so... Are they talking about libraries? Uh, in this case, when, when it comes to mo I, I understand that module loads that may be sort of a scripting type thing, right? Um, but they could could they could I mean a module could be this same thing but just in a different context as a library load. Right, so Windows has this concept of DLLs, right, dynamic right. libraries, yep. that you know uh, is good for keeping your program small and more efficient and updatable dynamically, right, by mm -hmm. the operating system. So, if you were to detect module loads in your sim, then you could see what programs need what libraries, right? So, if right. it's normal for notepad to use a particular library then you could exclude notepad using that library but maybe no other program normally uses that library right i don't know that i've ever seen that done <laughs> that that seems like uh you could you could bypass thinking about all that stuff by using a good endpoint or or like a um uh, whitelisting like app app blocker or whatever right uh -huh. and not have to worry specifically about trying to figure out what all dlls are tied to what yeah yeah that makes sense um <clears throat> so there are there are some things that are harder to mitigate than others um but you know you should only worry about those if that actually affects your environment if you don't have modules that you're loading with like um, I, I assume in this case, module is not like a kernel module. It's like a, what an NPM or Node Node JS kind of module thing. I just closed my tab. <laughs> right click, undo, <laughs> close tab. Uh, it was just talking about DLLs. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, well, that's very Windows centric. So you don't necessarily have that issue with with Linux. Uh, and, yeah, and right. That, I mean, yeah. you do have you have this SO was specific to Windows. Yeah, you do have SO lat libs. Uh, you, you have something similar, but it's not exactly the same with regards to DLLs. But yeah, and that might be later on. I don't know. I'm I'm only like, uh, what am I at? I'm at like forty. Is this work work or is this play work? Yeah, this is work work. This is forty out of like three hundred 
different oh, yeah. things listed in the attack matrix that I'm going oh. through. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm trying to come up with as many sim correlation rules as I can oh, manually. Very nice. Did they, uh, did, didn't they just update the attack matrix? They are updating it constantly. Right. Right. Okay. By the, by the time I make it through all of this, I'm sure I'll probably have read that wiki like three or four times. Right. Yep. I can, I can imagine that. I mean, we were trying to do the same thing with this, uh, the top 10 security controls and we got to like number 12 and they changed them up on us. I was like, damn it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that was sad. Yes, it was. And we did it wrong anyway. So we'd have to go back through and start over again if we wanted to do that. But you know, anyway, so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go cause Miss Berlin's got her all, you know, she's, anemic now because of all the the vampers that are getting her uh, at her house in ohio um ridiculous I, and i think it's because so i got i i just got all new windows for my house right uh and it's probably because for the last two days i've i've had giant gaping holes in my in my house so mm. yeah that's a lot not of good women, i'm that's assuming not good okay so um before we go some of the things i was working on like i said i read some books uh, i was also looking through uh the there's one of the moderators called uh ipp sec on uh, on our slack he's not a moderator on our slack he's a moderator on hack the box.eu but he has some really great walkthrough videos on youtube if you go and look for him uh i just search ipp sec and google and you can find his youtube channel really excellent walkthroughs on the retired hack the box um, hosts and it's uh definitely uh, definitely excellent you're going to learn some commands he loves him some go buster and i was putzing around with that as well on a, on a vulnerable VM uh, that uh, had a web application section on it. And that was, that was really great. He, uh, go it's very, Buster or Durbuster? Go, it's called Go Buster. I think it's like probably a fork of Durbuster, which was uh, oh. what it does is it's, it runs through a word list and attempts to find uh, hidden directories in your web application. So, you know, if you have a, uh, a directory that isn't necessarily linked anywhere in your site, like slash secret. Um, it will run through a word list and do like a HTTP request for your site slash secret. And if it finds it or it gives you something other than a, you know, 404, or, you know, uh, 503 or something, well, maybe 503 would be a good answer. But, um, you know, if it's, if it's available, it will show you that it's available and you can attempt to, to go to it later. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, really great tools. He he goes through them. He has a me- methodology that he runs through every time on these things, which is is excellent. He talks about um, uh, other various tools. The one I was watching was called, the, he did the nightmare walkthrough, which was the, literally two and a half hours. And he walked through this box and he was, you know, editing code from 64 to 32 bit because the exploit required a 32 bit exploit. Um, so he was, you know, debugging this thing and he was setting breakpoints. So, I mean, he, he was going through a lot of, a lot of really technical stuff on this to, to get nightmare cracked. And, uh, yeah, it was really, really excellent stuff. So, um, yeah, take a look at that on, uh, on his YouTube if you can. So, uh, I know some of you are waiting for the BreakSec DerbyCon ticket CTF. We are diligently working on that. Uh, we have a meeting this weekend to plan when we're going to shove that out to some, our... Some of us are diligently working on that. I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> I actually made a pretty cool, well, I, I say it's pretty cool because it's pretty cool for me, but I have a, a challenge that I created this year with a flag and everything, which was way different than the last two years. Uh, and we've, we picked up uh, some friends, uh, Matt Domko, who's at, at hashtag cyber on Twitter. Uh, he's uh, got us a, a scoreboard and, a, and an environment that you can navigate to when we get this up and running and, and, uh, um, I'm hoping I'm not over overselling this, but I, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So, uh, Mr. Betcher still has to, uh, is going to be uploading his soon, and Miss Berlin's going to be uploading hers. But we've got uh, Tyler Hudak created some challenges. Sex Shogoth on Twitter, he uh, does a lot of reverse engineering stuff, and I think he added maybe some minor reverse engineering or or something, uh, some kind of challenges there for that. So I'm really really glad to see that. So um, I'm going to go and I'm going to. You know, get everybody else's contact info here. So, Miss Berlin, if everybody missed you at uh, or you didn't miss them with the card at uh, at Hacker Summer Camp, how would they uh, get a hold of you so they could run, get run over by the card? <laughs> so, I'll be at Derby, um, and then at Info Sister on Twitter and Slack. It's I N F O S Y S T I R. This is crazy. I'm going to be at Derby. 
What? What? No. What? Mr. Betcher, how about you? Are you going to be a derby? I think so. Shut up. That's the plan. Oh, my goodness. It's a confluence of events is going to cause us all to. Amazing. Too we much, need to have another pizza party too. Too much awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm going to try to figure out the meetup uh, thing for that. I think we may have it at the same place we had it last year, only because I think the Hyatt's going to be too big, and I don't want to make people unhappy at the Hyatt. So we're going to try to figure out where we're going to have that. If you were at the one last year, it'll probably be in the same place. So we'll we'll announce it as we get closer. So, Mr. Betcher, I know you're going to be a Derby. Are you going to be anywhere else between now and then? Um, just working. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, so um, if people wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Well, they can reach me at DerbyCon, of course. Oh, obviously. And then there's also Twitter at Betcherpwn, B-O-E-T-T-C-H-E-R-P-W-N-E-D. Hit me up on the DM and uh, we'll start a conversation. Right on. And you're also the, the lead developer of uh, LogMD, too. So if people wanted to find out about LogMD, how would they do that? They could go to the website log-md.com. Awesome. Yeah, you're the uh, head developer and chief technical officer and head, you know, GitHub repo maintainer or something, right? Yeah. You betcha. Nice. Nice. So, uh, podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at BrakeSec, B-R-A-K-E-S-E-C. Uh, you follow me on Twitter, B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E, Brian Brake. Uh, we have a, so I keep forgetting to mention this, but Miss Berlin was kind enough to set up a tea pub for us. So if you are interested in getting a t-shirt or some paraphernalia from tea pub, we have stickers on there as well. Um, we also have a very special limited edition shirt with a picture of Miss Berlin's face on it. Of which we've sold three of so far. Nobody came up at, at oh. Hacker Summer Camp with the shirt? I was supposed to go get mine um, from Courtney, one of the girls that runs Diana Initiative. Uh -huh. She got me one and she got her one. Nice. So that's two out of the three. I don't know who the third person is that wanted my face on a t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, I suspect you probably either listen to the podcast or you're just weird and want my face on t-shirt. I don't know. Who, who doesn't? Uh, who, who doesn't? I, you know, I'm surprised we haven't sold more than three. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Those shirts are very good quality. If you come to DerbyCon, we're going to have a few that are from a different company, but of equal or better quality. So um, we're not selling them. I think we're going to be just giving them away for the most part. Um, uh plus or minus we'll, we'll see what it what, what we're doing with that so but yeah so what, what are you doing we are you i'm yawning oh Sorry. i thought you were doing like john cena or something with that thing in the like the, the wrestlers do or something I, anyway. I don't know what that is all right well anyway uh, if you're interested in doing that you can get over there to t-pub it's in the links in our show notes you can join us and, and check that out uh we're on uh google play apple itunes um uh, Leave us feedback if you'd like. Uh, you know, we're all over the place. Thank you to our patrons. We've had a lot of people giving money to us, which is great. That money goes to you know doing things like uh, giving out stickers and mailing stickers and uh, getting T-shirts if you're interested in doing that uh, at conferences that we're going to be at. If you you know get a limited edition T-shirt, so and, and also pays for hosting costs, equipment upgrades, and uh, Zoom video. Uh, you know, conferencing, which we use on our Slack, which is going gangbusters. We got a ton of people in there talking about all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a little quiet right now. I actually had it up and I haven't had any uh, announcements while we're here. So I'm starting to get a little weirded out. I don't know if it's off or not. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, you can send a DM to BreakSec on Twitter, or you can just email us at bds.podcast at gmail.com. So I'm out. I'm glad everybody's back and got safe. I know Miss Berlin drove halfway across the United States and then back again in a week and we a half. Drove almost five thousand miles. Oh my god! You, yep. that poor rental car. Yeah, I, I took it. I took it back on Tuesday, and she's like, "Where did you go? <laughs> did you get the ones that uh, there's no limit to mileage?" Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, unlimited mileage. Yeah. That's right. Go, yeah, it, go had, that way. it had like the change oil, change filter. You need new tires. <laughs> you need oh. new tires. Oh, oh yeah. God. All of the alerts were up there. Oh, my God. Wow. I That's think they at least, you know, at the, at the most, they broke even on that exchange. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, that that car is going to be sent to the fleet to be resold as a program car. That's where I got my <laughs> that's where I got my Hyundai, but the one I got before my uh, hybrid here. It was a it was an Enterprise rent a car. I think it was probably the rent a car I used after my accident. So, very interesting stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm Brian, Miss Berlin, Mister Betcher. This is Breakdown Security. This was it for this week. Have a great week, and we will talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye.